notice on the news that everything is everybody's talking about is disarmament 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 the world over how many of you know that things happen in the spirit prior to things in the natural you all know that that's right and it's like this week <clears throat> Carol and I both have been struggling with our throats why why Disarmament. Disarmament. The devil is trying to disarm the world. The devil is trying to disarm ministries. And he is trying to disarm the body of Christ as a whole. Churches and etc. And of course the message you give me this evening is pretty well straightforward. It's not going to be a long message. It's about the Holy Ghost. Just a straight forward message and sometimes you know those are the best amen well <clears throat> the Lord give me Luke 24 49 and he said and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from up on high and if you notice there what he's saying is tarry ye in other words he's saying don't leave home don't leave the city. Don't leave home, in other words, until you are endued with power from on high. After Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, and I'll, I'll update you here, he appeared to the, his disciples many numerous times. For about the space of 40 days, he was with them, teaching them about the kingdom of God. Yet they still needed something from God before they would be ready to go out with the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection. And Jesus, of course, what he was talking about, he was saying that they needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. The Word of God says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. In other words, don't leave town, don't leave home, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, ye, he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. This baptism of the Holy Ghost was spoken of by John the Baptist, is what he was speaking of, and John the Baptist, of course, spoke of it actually before the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew 3.11, John the Baptist has said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Then, of course, the promised day arrived ten days uh, after Jesus Christ ascended to heaven on the day of of Pentecost. We can read about that in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What happened in that upper room was the beginning of the body of Christ. Now, who's the body of Christ? <coughs> That's right. We are the body of Christ, are we not? We are His hands, His feet his legs, his pocketbook, everything. We are the body of Christ. It may sound strange to you, but God really cannot function without us. 
It sounds strange why he would pick a weak man like us, but God, Almighty, as great as he is, cannot function without us. That occurrence in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, what it did is it ushered in the body of Christ's entrance into the supernatural realm with the power of the Holy Ghost. As you can read here, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost manifested itself in a supernatural way, did it not? As all were filled, I don't know how many of you may know this, but there were 120 people in that upper room, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the Word of God plainly says that all, all were filled. Not just 12 disciples. All were filled, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. I've heard people say, well, them tongues, that's of the devil. Do you really think that Jesus Christ is going to let his own mother be full of the devil? No. Let alone all the disciples? No. Because, you see, they all were filled, all 120 of them, with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak in other tongues. The disciples that I'm talking about, all 120, plus Mary, now had the same Holy Ghost that had indwelt Jesus Christ himself during Jesus' earthly ministry. They began to fulfill that supernatural ministry which our Lord Jesus Christ had already began. Jesus just happened to be the first. The baptism of the Holy Ghost was not the disciples' introduction into the kingdom of God. I want to make that plain to you. That was not their, just their introduction into the kingdom of God, for they were already a part of that kingdom, were they not? It was, however, their introduction into the supernatural, miracle-working power of the Holy Ghost. From that moment on, Peter and all the disciples started moving in the miraculous. Peter walked out the door and immediately 3,000 souls were saved. He walked by the, tent, the, gate, uh, the, uh, the temple of the gate they called Beautiful and, and, and raised a, a lame man up and he walked. The same Peter that had denied Jesus Christ just a few days earlier, three times. What had happened in the meantime? He had been filled and endued with power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> You'll notice that all churches, even spirit-filled churches, really don't push tongues, do they? You ever notice that? You know why? You know why? The strategy of Satan. He's disarming you. You better believe it. It's a strategy of the devil. Disarm your enemy and what can he do to you? Zero. Exactly what they're doing the world over right this very minute. Watch, my dear people. Disarmament. <coughs> Particularly Russia. Israel. Why did Jesus introduce them into the miraculous? Well, if you look, turn back to John's Gospel, chapter 14. Stay with me now. <clears throat> Verse 12. This is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Who's he talking to here? Talking to us, isn't it? He says, He that believeth on me, is it, are, are we all not believers in here? Amen? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my Father. You mean I'm going to do greater oh, things than Jesus? You better believe it. You better believe it. How am I going to do that? Because 
Jesus is going to lead us into a walk with him through the power of the Holy Ghost of the supernatural. Our Lord Jesus Christ fully intends for the body of Christ, are we not the body of Christ, to walk in that very same supernatural power. We are his body. We are his hands, his feet, his mouth upon the earth. If we do not perform our job, nothing happens. That's simple. Well, I'm going to stay here in the book of John 14, just a few minutes. Continue on verse 13. Then he said, And whatsoever you shall do it, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Ask in what name? The name of Jesus. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then he said, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Then he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love him tonight? And he's saying to you, Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. The devil is disarming me the world over. My church is crumbling at its foundation. Yeah. Even in America, they're crumbling. Did you know that? Even in America. I thought I would never see it. It's going the other way now. Yeah. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Forever is a long time, isn't it? Isn't forever a long time? You better believe it. But he's talking about, I will pray the Father and he will shall give you another comforter. In other words, Jesus saying, I, my dad, my father is going to give you another comforter besides me. Even then he calls him what? The Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Who shall be in you? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Who is the Holy Ghost? Well, he's the comforter, and here we see he's the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. Verse 18, And I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall also live. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And Judas saith unto him, not Judas Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you in other words Jesus was talking to them right there right there and in verse 26 he says but the comforter but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost he names him by name. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name. Listen to this. He shall teach you all things. You know who teaches you the Word of God? The Holy Ghost. Then he says, and bring all things to your remembrance. You know who, 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 who brings you all things to your remembrance? The Holy Ghost. He's your reminder too. You see. So you see here, <clears throat> Jesus is exhorting us to look for the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. And he's telling us that he shall be in us. Do you ever notice, and we have a mixture of different churches here, but I guarantee you, you can take a church that's not Spirit-filled and they will not walk in the truth. They will not walk in the truth if they're not Spirit-filled. That sounds strange. It's true. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Truth. He leads us into all truth. 
That's how people, that's how people get off base. Because they're not led by the Spirit. You see? Now, <clears throat> and it keeps talking on. Then he goes to uh, John's Gospel, chapter 16. And to just enlighten you a little bit more, I'm going to read this one from the Amplified. Uh, chapter 16 of John's Gospel, beginning in verse 7. Also, you might want to notice, you make a note of this, but chapter 15, it talks in, it's talking about the, the vine and the branches, isn't it? It's sandwiched between 14 and 16. Both, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. And then right between them, he's saying, you are my vine. I mean, I'm your vine, you my branches. You, why are we a branch? Because we're the ones that are supposed to bear the fruit. We have to bear the fruit. Otherwise, there is no fruit. John's Gospel 16, beginning in verse 7. Jesus again talking. He says, however, just amplified, I am telling you nothing but the truth. He's still talking about the Holy Ghost. When I say it is profitable, he's saying, hey guys, it is profitable. It is good. It's expedient. Advantageous for you that I go away. Now, you know, if we were sitting there and Jesus himself said, well, I'm going to go away, we'd be kind of sad, wouldn't we? We wouldn't want him to go away. But he's saying it's advantageous that he did go away because I do not go away. If I do not go away, the comforter will not come. And then he he, he gives the comforter more names. He he says the comforter, which is our... In other words, he's our counselor. He's our helper. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's our strengthener and our standby. And then it says, and he said, he, there was, the comforter will not come to you into close fellowship with you, but if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Then he says, and when he comes, verse 8, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin. Demonstration? What's he talking about? Demonstration. He's going to watch over his word to perform it, isn't he? He's going to watch over his word to perform it. And about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God and about judgment. About sin, in other words, conviction there, because they do not believe in me, trust in, rely, and adhere to me. Then we'll drop down to verse 13. He says, but when he, but when he, the Holy Ghost he's talking about, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes. He's saying the truth-giving spirit Spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole, full truth. <clears throat> For he will not speak of his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. Who will? The Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that wants to indwell you. He will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Then he will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive and draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. What's the Holy Ghost do? Gives you revelation knowledge. My dear people, if if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you cannot understand this. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost, to reveal the Word of God to you through revelation knowledge. So what we see here, Jesus, first of all, in verse 7, he said, it is advantageous for you that he goes away. Why? So the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, can come to you. Why? So that the Counselor, the Helper, Advocate, Intercessor, Strengthener, and Standby can come to you. Why? So he can, he, he can have demonstration, in other words, of confirming his word. Confirming his word. To keep you in all truth. Why? Because he hears from the Father. What does he hear? Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. My dear people, we need the spirit of truth to receive and understand the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. To have the spirit of truth dwelling 
working in and instructing us, we need to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 15, verse 19, Paul the Apostle says, this is from the Amplified, he said, even my preaching has been accompanied with the power of signs and wonders. Then he says, and all of it, what? The signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Ghost. You see? By the power of the Holy Ghost. What is? Signs and wonders, you see, are performed by the Holy Ghost. You see? The Holy Ghost also gives us guidance, direction, and discernment. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 2, verse 33, the, the Word of God says, The Holy Ghost is a promise of our Father, from God. And then we read in, in the book of Acts chapter um, 2, again, you still with me? Excuse me. Chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. The Word of God says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, that ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you see, <clears throat> the Holy Ghost is what? A gift. A gift. He's a promise. From who? The Father. Most people in the churches today don't even want the gift. They don't want it. Then he said, th verse 39, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He named by name to everybody, hadn't he? Hmm? Forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> So you see, the Holy Ghost is a gift, and he is a promise to all, afar off, forever and ever and ever. And we see in John's Gospel 16, 14, where Jesus said, He will honor and glorify me. He also said, He will take the things that are mine and reveal it to you. He will reveal it to you. What? The revelation of his word. There's nothing like it, my dear people, to have that word just open up in front of your eyes. Nothing like it. Money couldn't buy it. You, you couldn't buy it. Because it's just from the Father. It's from the Father. So you see, the Holy Ghost gives us that revelation knowledge that our hearts, our spirit man, <coughs> seeks for. The Holy Ghost is the source. Why? He's the third person of the Trinity. How many of you know that God is a spirit? We all know that, don't you? So is Jesus. And you know what? They're both up there. You know who's here? The Holy Ghost. He's here. He's here. No, they didn't leave him behind. They sent him here to do a job. To be our comforter. Our helper. Our advocate. Our strengthener. Our standby. Our intercessor. You know, the Word of God says, actually, it instructs us. It, actually, it instructs us. And it says in Ephesians 6.18, in the Amplified, the Word of God says, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Now, how do you pray in the Spirit? You pray in tongues. You pray in tongues. Tell. So, well, I don't know about them tongues. I'll show you all about it in a second. In Jude 20, the book of Jude, chapter 20. Now, the book of Jude is like one page right before the Revelations. You don't know where it's at. The book of Jude, verse 20. Jude, of course, was a servant of Jesus Christ, and he was the brother, the brother of James. 
And in verse 20, he says, But ye beloved... Now, who's he talking to there? He's talking to us, isn't he? He's talking to his beloved. He said, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He's saying, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So, what he's saying here is, when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you are building up your spirit man. You are building up your spirit man. To do what? To become strong in the spirit. To become strong in the spirit. Ephesians 6.10. I believe it is. We won't turn to it. But it says, become, be strong in the spirit. How do you think you get strong in the spirit? I just showed you right there. You pray in the Spirit. How do you do that? You pray in the Holy Ghost. You see, it is important that we become sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you see, my dear people, it is the Holy Ghost is the one who teaches, trains, and guides us. It is the Holy Ghost who brings the power of God. He brings the glory of God into manifestation here on the earth. Why? Why? Why when you go to a meeting and the Holy Ghost is present, you see things start to happen? Why? Why is it? Because He's supernatural. He's supernatural. How many of you would like to be able to, every time you open your mouth, pray the perfect will of God? I see a hand on it. For your life, for your family's life, for your job, for the government. Everybody? Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 26. Actually, it's verses 26 and 27. This is Paul speaking, and he says, Likewise, and he's talking here about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. The King James, which I always use, he always uses the Holy Ghost, and a lot of them, the NIV will use the Holy Spirit, but it's the same. It says, Likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Ghost, also helpeth our infirmities. Now, the word infirmities in the Greek, as you know, I, I read a lot of Greek, I look at things up in the Greek, but the word infirmities in the Greek means inabilities. It doesn't mean sickness, it means inabilities. For we, talking about us, know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Who does? The Holy Spirit. Who is? The Holy Ghost. With groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, utterances, tongues. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts, in other words, searches your spirit, man, knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You want to pray God's perfect will? Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, and you will pray God's perfect will for your life.